I'm going to show you how to use templates with Pixomatic. This is where the software really shines because it gives you a massive shortcut. You have professionally designed graphic templates that you literally can just click on to import it onto the canvas and then you can go ahead and design this or customize it any way you like. And so the options that you have here are pretty limitless. Okay, you can you can change the background on any of these things if you want to. This the background here if I click on it, I can move it all around. I can remove that background and then I can go ahead and add another background. Now for the background, basically the way that it works is I can choose backgrounds based on the niche or there are a bunch of general ones as well. Now again, depending on your member level, you'll have more or less of the backgrounds and more or less of all the graphics and elements. I'm showing you this at the highest level so you can get a sense of it. But basically, this is more of a beauty fashion type thing. So maybe I want to check out the beauty fashion backgrounds and then decide. Um, so let's say, okay, I like this one instead. I can click on this, I can move it into position, and then I can order this any way I want. I can move it to the top, I can move it up one layer, down one layer, or all the way to the back. So if I do that, I can move it all the way to the back. Now it's behind, but because the text is black, I'm still going to need to make some changes to this if I want to keep it. Okay, so basically what I can do now is, and by the way, with all of the elements that you import, you can rotate them, you can scale them to make them larger or smaller. Let's put that back to where it was. You can also make them transparent or opaque. So if I wanted to do that, now I can all of a sudden see the text better. You can change the color on some things like shapes. Color doesn't, doesn't affect all of the different things like photos and things like that. But if you import shapes then or use shapes, then you can change the color. You can add a shadow or a glow and you can change the color of that shadow or glow. The, the visibility, like how transparent that particular shadow or glow is and how large it is. Okay, with all of those all of those effects. So that's how the, the backgrounds work. Now, if I want to go to elements, um, first of all, any of the elements on here, I can move around. Okay, I can also resize them. You know, I can do any of the same things to the existing elements as I do to any of the new ones. I can make this appear less transparent. I can rotate this. You can also duplicate. So you can add a copy of anything you want. You can delete. You can, for text, you can align it left, you can align it right, or you can align it to the center. And of course, you can move things up and down layers to make them visible or not. So those are the options that you have with that. Now, if I click on elements to see additional elements, I could add lighting if I wanted to add a lighting thing. And then obviously, I'm, I can go ahead here and I can scale that. All right, so I can make that whatever size that I want. And then I can add shapes. So shapes are very useful as a general tip when to put behind text for the simple reason that if you put the shapes behind text, then what you're going to get is when you spin it, no matter what the background looks like, the text will still appear really, really clear. All right, so this is just a sort of a, a million dollar tip here. If I want to go ahead and put a shape in here, and I can stretch this. It doesn't have to maintain the same aspect ratio. I can do that. I can also now move this back a few layers. So that way, all of the things I had over it are going to be visible. If I want to scale this. And then let's say, um, okay, let's actually pull this in a little bit. And pull this in a little bit. So we can customize this shape however we want. And then let's say I wanted to actually change the color of this shape. Because remember, for shapes, we can change the color. So if I wanted to go all the way to white with that, I can go to white with it. And so now you've got sort of a cool design here. And what's great about that is if I go to spin this now, no matter what kind of background it's going to put in the, in the the behind it, because my text is on top of a shape that has a good contrast in color, it's always going to appear looking really good. All right, so for elements, let me just show you the other things that you've got. You've got transparent images. And the transparent images are, 
you know, things like uh, whether it's people or fruit or whatever, the great thing is they have no background to them. So when you add them to your design, it's seamless. It, it, you know, it looks beautiful on the design. And then you can, you know, adjust the size and shape of that as well if you want. So you can go ahead and put that where you want. But all the transparent designs, the nice thing about them is they fit seamlessly right on top of your design and will, will look great. Now, photos are JPEGs, so they're not transparent. These can be used as alternate backgrounds, or you could use them, depending on what kind of design you're making, as smaller uh, images inside your image for photos. The illustrations are graphic designs. So same thing, you could add these if you like cartoon drawn style things. Frames are things that you can use to put around either the outside or somewhere within the frame. If I wanted to click on this to add a frame, I could do that. Now, obviously this doesn't match the size of my design. So I can go ahead and I can change the aspect ratio. I can crush that in if I want. I can also pull this back out. So I can make this look like a frame that goes all the way around by just stretching it. Now, if I don't want it to sit on top, I can send it back a bunch of layers. So it'll actually sit behind just about everything else. And so that makes it look really cool. It frames the image to make it look really, really neat. And then there are icons. And then there are also overlays. Now overlays are sort of semi-transparent um, things that you can put over things to change sort of the, the way that it looks or the shadowing or the lighting and things like that. So when you put it, sometimes it's very subtle. You don't notice it. But if you see I drag it around, you can see that corner is sort of lit up a little bit. You see how that, how that looks like that? So overlays can be very useful to give you a different sort of subtle look to your design. If you wanted this to look like it had a little bit of a shine up here, you could do that with an overlay. Okay, so that's the way the overlays work. Now, let's just remove that for a minute because I want to be able to show you something different here. So um, actually, I'm going to remove that as well. And I'm going to focus on a shape here. So if I highlight this shape and then I go to effects, what I can do here is I can grayscale it, which it's already white, so that's not going to help. But I can emboss it. And you'll see it adds, in this case, it changes the actual color. But it doesn't always do that. It depends on the actual image that you're using. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to apply these different sort of filters to, to what you're doing. You can sharpen it. You can blur it. Again, with a shape, you're going to have a little bit less of an effect with that. You can also add a pattern. So if I click on that, now you can notice there's this cool bubble pattern to the back of my shape. And so you have those effects that you can add as well. Now for text, if I click on any of the text boxes that are already there, okay, what that's going to do, I'm going to actually delete this. What that's going to do is that's going to allow me to edit the text. So I can change this to whatever I want it to say. I can change the color, obviously, of the font if I want to change the color. I can change the font itself. And again, the number of fonts that you have available to you depends on your member level. Okay, so the higher your member level, the more fonts you're going to have available to you. But regardless, you're going to have a bunch available to you that you can use so depending on how you want to structure this, you can bold, italicize, underline, you can change the size, you can add a drop shadow to this. So if I want to make a shadow, and obviously with a sketch type um, font, it's not going to look quite as good, but now you can see there's a little black drop shadow. I can change the color of that shadow. So if I wanted to make it blue, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do. Now, one key tip here is, if you click on something like the text here and it doesn't highlight and it doesn't open up the text thing, it means there's a layer that's in front of it. So when I had that overlay, when I had the, the bubbles on there, it was sitting on top of the text. I had to either delete it or move it backward in order to be able to do that. So bear in mind, if you click on something and for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to highlight the right thing, it's just because the layering system has some layer in front of what you're trying to select. So all you need to do is move that layer back or drag it to the side to, to edit what you want to edit, and then it will work. So, so it takes a little, bit of, a little bit of practice to understand exactly how it all works, but it's super intuitive once you start using it.
okay? If I want to import things, again, this is um, an advanced feature that is not available. Um, so I will show you that on another, on another video. But if I want to upload my own things, okay, this is the way the upload works. The first thing you have to do is select the type of thing that you're going to upload. And the reason for this is if you go to spin the design, the, the spinner needs to know what you're actually adding to your design so it knows exactly how to spin that. All right, so if I go in here and I say, um, let's see, transparent, and then I click on done, now I can drag and drop a transparent image here. And when I go and I do that, let's see, I'm going to find a different one because that's not a great transparent. All right, so let's say the plant here. If I drag this here, now when I add this to my design, okay, this is put in as a transparent image. So the software knows that. Now if I click spin on transparent, it's going to tag this as a transparent and it will spin that as a transparent image. All right, so when you upload anything, that's the way that it's going to work. If you're uploading backgrounds, you actually choose the category of the background, the niche of the background, general if it doesn't fit into another niche, and that way, same thing, it will spin only relevant backgrounds, so your designs will always match what you're trying to do.